term three. Again, we're doing sum of products, so sum the results. Okay, the first step there, grouping ones. Let's talk about that one in a little more detail. Okay, so the rule is maximize the size of the group. Minimize the number of groups. Okay, um, the size is going to be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32 cells in a Carnot map, so on and so forth. Get the picture? It's powers of two. One, two, double two, four, double four, eight, double eight, 16, so on and so forth. But if you think about it, for a three variable Carnot map, I mean, let's just go back up here. How many cells do you see? You see eight cells in a three car. Uh, three variable Carnot map. How many do you see in a four variable? You see 16, so you're obviously not going to get more than eight for a three variable, and you're not going to get more than 16 for a four variable. So um, let's talk about that. That's, yeah, that's group size B. Um, each cell must be adjacent to one or more cell, but not all adjacent with each other. We'll talk about this a little bit more. Adjacent. Okay, um, always get the largest group. And additionally, each one must be in a group. They can overlap as long as an overlapping, as, as long as overlapping groups include a non common ones. So overlap is allowed as long as the overlapping group includes non-common ones. So we're actually going to use these rules here a little bit um, so you get used to them. So let's just draw, um, let's take our, well, let's just take our um, example uh, Carnot maps that we just used. Let's, I'm going to copy and paste our three variable one, and we'll go ahead and work on this one. Okay, here's our three variable that we worked with. Well, here's a group of two. Here's also a group of two overlapping. Here's also a group of two. And if you think about it, what else is a group of two? This guy and this guy wrapping around, but we've already included them because they're adjacent there. Okay, so don't worry about that one, but it's just kind of a trick of adjacency just because we will be doing that. Okay, let's take our four variable one that we worked with. And right here, here is a big old group right here. Group of eight. Here's a group of two. And here is also a group of two, but check this out. This whole column, that's a group of four. So let's try these examples here. Okay, looking at our three variable Carnot map, looks like this guy is a group of two, because remember, the south cell is adjacent with the one north of it. So basically, yeah, I'm talking from this one. So he's south, so he's adjacent. OK, um, this guy, these guys are adjacent. But check this out. And I'm going to do this one in blue so you can see it. Yeah, there's a group left and right. And there's a group right and left here. But check this out. Due to our wraparound adjacency, where the top is adjacent with the bottom, we have a group of four there. Pretty cool, huh? So we're maximizing the size of the groups, minimizing the number of groups of one. OK, so let's go on to this four variable Carnot map. It looks like we've got a big old group of four right there. And we've got a little tiny group of two right here. And it looks like we've got two groups of four, one running down the left side, one down, running down the right side. But check this out again left and right are also adjacent cells. We could group a big old group of eight wrapping around the back right there. Pretty neat, huh? 
So now all these little tricks really don't amount to much until we know what we're going to do with these groups. So that was, we just went over step one is basically grouping our ones. What's step two is determine the group product term. Okay, so what is the group product term? Let's talk about the size of our groups first. Okay, for a three variable Carnot map, one cell will have three product terms. Because here, wait one second, let me just draw a three, uh, three variable Carnot map. Okay, because, let me go to full screen. Right there, if there's just one of them, it's basically there's one cell, and that's our only group that we can make. It's going to have three variables to it. Namely, in this case, it's going to be not A, not B, not C. Okay, if there's two cells in a group, right there, there's going to be a two-variable product term. Okay, what is the term? I mean, think about this. We've got, just look at 0, 1. Let's just do the combinations here. 0, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1. So it looks like the thing that doesn't really matter in here is this, this A term, whereas B and C have to be on 1. So it looks like that can be brought down to B, C. So one cell, three variables. Then our product, two cells, it's a two variable product. And let's see, three cell, oops, that doesn't work because you know, they have to be one, two, four, eight, et cetera, et cetera. So four cells, what do you think it's gonna be? It's gonna be one variable product. And if you think about it, you get eight cells, doesn't matter because everything's one. Okay, so let's talk about our four cells. I'm gonna erase this guy. No, actually I'm gonna keep, yeah, one, one, one. What is the product for this uh, four variable cell? Excuse me, four cells. What is the product for that? It's gonna have one variable in it, and it's namely, it's the one that doesn't change. This is the reason why this becomes hypercritical here, that one, 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 zero, keeping that so only one variable changes at a time. This is why you do it. Okay, so if you list all possible occurrences, and once you get the hang of this, you don't have to keep on doing what I'm doing. One, one, zero. 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, oh, sorry, 1, 0, 0. So what are the variables that, what is the variable that doesn't change? Well, it looks like it's A. All combinations of B or not B, and we've got C, or not C here. Okay, so it's A in this case. So if we had the Carnot map, a three variable Carnot map that looked exactly like this, you'd get A or BC or not A, not B, not C. Okay, so let's move on to a four variable Carnot map and we'll show you how to group that one and determine what product term is for each group. Okay, let's say you've got this guy here. And remember, so for four variable Carnot map, if you've got one cell, you're going to have four variables. Um, for two cells with a group, a group of two cells, you're going to have three variables. A group of four cells, you're going to have two variables. A group of eight cells, you're going to have one variable. A group of 16, doesn't matter because it's all ones. Okay, so let's make a uh, let's make use of this guy here. So first thing and most obvious, this big old group eight. 